healing. What is it and who's it for? Hi, my name is Christine Dosti, and I'm the CEO and find, founder of Sacred Vitality. And I'm here today to talk about healing. Healing. I've been on the healing journey for quite a few years now, and I've come to a realization that I talk about healing all the time around healing, but I've never actually made a video where I discuss what is healing actually about and who is healing actually for. So let's get into it. What is healing? Healing is when we reconcile, basically, what we were raised to believe versus what we would like to believe or are realizing is more truthful and honest for ourselves. What do I mean by that? Well, when we're younger, we all get input about who we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be. And we get implanted in our subconscious minds all these little statements called core beliefs or programs or tapes or whatever term you want to use. But basically, it's things like children should be seen and not heard or money doesn't grow on trees or, you know, little girls are like this and little boys are like that. And your expectation of life from your family, from TV, from society, from your friend group, from your cultural groups. When you're younger, all of these get embedded into what's called your subconscious. Your subconscious gets formed before you're seven. So I don't want to get too much into the science of it, but it is very important to know because healing is for people who are seeking truth about themselves. And if you are, are not enjoying your life, if you're not in the career that you currently want, if you're not manifesting a loved one or all the money or all the joy or all the health or anything that you're looking for, then you're probably seeking what is the answer. But healing, true healing, and some people might find this controversial, but it's my video, so I say what I want. True healing is really only for people who are ready to be healed. Lots of people come to me and they're seeking and they're curious and they're interested, but they want to do the fun parts, right? They want to learn about tarot. They want to make crystal grids. They want to do a moon ritual and they want to talk about the fun things, make, make a craft, if you will. And all of that is wonderful. Affirmations are wonderful. Mantras, having a morning routine, all wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But that's not really what healing comes down to. Healing is messy. It is ugly. It is scary. It can go on for a while. It is a process that invites you to strip away your identity, layers of your ego, taking a hard look sometimes at some past experiences so that you can unwind and separate out the energetic charges that cause trauma and triggers and drama. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's, it's really not. So if you are into energy or you call yourself a witch or you're just even, you know, energy curious, if you will, or you're looking to raise your level of consciousness, then healing is going to invite you into the inner circle of taking a real hard lovingly compassionate, gentle, but still real, look at what's going on, truly. Where are your beliefs coming from? All for the ultimate goal of well-being and health, for sure. But in order to get to the fun, shiny, sparkly, new career, new job, new love, new manifestation, you know, glow up, living your best life, then you got to be willing to uncover and rewire and get messy with your subconscious, like going into the basement, clearing out what is the energetic stuff you're hoarding? What are the things that you feel like you can't let go of? This is what true healing is actually asking you to do. And why? Because as I said, we form all of these mindsets and belief structures when we're very, very young. And the way that the mind works, if you leave that stuff alone, it will run 
forever. It, it will just run forever. So let's say now you're an adult and you want to manifest a new career. Let's say, let's say you're like, I want to go into this line of career, but what's stopping you from doing it? What's stopping you from, you know, having that experience? Maybe, maybe it's that you don't have experience or it's brand new. Fine. That's totally normal. But also maybe there is some beliefs that are going on that revolve around you not believing in yourself, you believing that you're not deserving or not worthy. This is usually these core things, right? I'm not good enough. I don't deserve love. I have a really mismatch <laughs> understanding of what wealth is. You know, I, ha I can't have wealth because I have all these belief systems that being rich is bad or rich people are, you know, shady and greedy and all these things. And so if that is operating inside your body, it's going to keep you in misalignment. It's going to keep you away from the things that you're consciously attempting to create. So when we're working with healing, we're reconciling, basically. We need to go inside and reconcile. And sometimes we can have two conflicting ideas at the same time. Maybe one of your parents was really, let's stay on the money thing. Maybe one of your parents was really good with money, had a great career, and talked to you about money and made it seem like, yeah, of course, money, energy, like totally normal, where you had another parent or someone influential in your life and they didn't talk about money and they hit their bills and they didn't look at stuff and they were scared of the numbers and they flittered their money away and had no idea about a budget or savings. And now, now maybe you keep going through cycles in your life where you have a lot of money and you're doing really good with your money. And then all of a sudden you get really impulsive and you go and bleed your money away in big and small ways. And at the end of the month, or a couple months, suddenly you're right back where you started and you cannot seem to get ahead. When things like that are happening in your life, that's a sign that there needs to be some healing. And you're not going to be able to just make an altar or do a ritual and call in the money. Yes, you probably can to a certain extent. So don't get me wrong. I know people have very strong wills and they can use that willpower to exert influence on their reality. Totally possible. But it's also very exhausting and it's going to produce limited and short-term results. Deep, deep healing. Clearing out the subconscious programming that doesn't work for you anymore and replacing it with more positive programming that promotes nourishment and resourcing for yourself and self-care and putting yourself first in appropriate ways, that is going to lead to the kind of manifestation of your reality that is very lasting, very loving, very compassionate, and very much, let's be honest, that we're all seeking. <laughs> and if you are my generation, Gen X or older or younger, then you may not really have known what real healing was about because it's not something that we were taught or talked about when we were growing up. A lot of the programming I heard was like rub dirt in it, you know, brush yourself off and just move on. Um, even things like around the house, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. In order to make money, you have to work really, really hard because money doesn't fall from trees, things like that. These are all statements that even though you might dismiss them and think, that yeah, that's just something that was said to me. Your subconscious actually more than likely locked that in as like, this is how reality is. And it is screwing with how you're showing up in your relationship to money, in your careers, in your, your home life, in your relationships with other people. And if you're like, is that me? Is that applying to me? Well, then just do a quick scan of areas of your life and see where you're flourishing and thriving and see where maybe you're only surviving and it's a constant like restart or patterns keep showing up that repeat and repeat and repeat in areas where you don't feel good. That That's what the healing is for. <laughs> all of us, basically, all of us, I'm sure, have some area of our lives where we're like, this is a feel good and I'm not loving this. But real healing is actually only for the people who are ready, who are committed, who are eyes open. I gotta get 
I got to get my my knees in the muck, you know, got to get my hands dirty, whatever metaphor works for you, but you got to do the work. You got to be able to bring awareness to these subconscious thoughts, bring them up into the conscious realm so that you can actually see them. You have to pay attention to the words you say and the stories you tell and how, how you're showing up in your everyday. And then you have to do something with that information. Small microscopic changes, sure, working on a habit, working on a pattern, but dealing and healing with the story that is embedded in there, embedded in your organs and your bodies, why you get triggered, why you get reactive, why, right, why you're not coming from present moment choice and response, but you're coming from the reactive past. And then recognizing that that's not a linear path, just because you did it today doesn't mean you're going to be successful tomorrow. It's, it's ongoing. It's ongoing and it requires a level of energy and conscious commitment and returning and returning and realizing that healing goes like this, right? And we're winning some days and we're exhausted and underfed and under caffeinated other days and we don't have the bandwidth to do it, but we return and we return and we return and we return. That is not for the weak, the faint of heart. If you got like kids and jobs and people, right? You will very easily be like, I don't have time for this. Yeah, okay. And that's fine. Like that is fine. There's no judgment there. But just to be clear <laughs> about what healing actually is. And sure, you can take it in doses. You can take it slowly. You can try to do it all at once and do a, a, do a healing or a process or something and and you can shift it on a quantum level very quickly, but then you need to rewire the mind pathways and stop feeding the old pathways and showing up with the new. And that's going to be awkward at first, and it's going to be challenging at first, and you're going to feel the familiarity of the old way of being, but the more you commit to the new way and the more you choose the new way, then the ego will relent and allow the new to become the new normal. And that's when you know, okay, I'm not triggered by this anymore. I'm healed by this. I'm, I'm ready for the next. And then you just do it again. Yeah, you do it again. Because once you're on the path of healing, you're always on the path of healing. You never, when you're on that road, you never get off. You can't unring that bell. You can't unknow that like, oh, this is my subconscious um, accidentally sabotaging me. And now I got some work to do. You can't ignore that once you start doing it. So if you are like, am I ready for healing? Am I on the path of healing? Let me know in the comments below if any of this rings true. Let me know if you're like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> I don't want to hear or know any of this. Why did you have to tell me anything? If there's other subjects about healing that you're interested in having me cover, then let me know. Drop it in the comments. And as always, I am wishing you well. I'm wishing you some healing. I'm wishing that you are able to design a life that you love. See you in the next one.